question. I see so many, well, some faces. Oh, thank you, Sipo. Thanks, Iso. Nice to see you both. Great to see you. Um, so welcome to our third session uh, of the Mandela Mile. And today we are absolutely honored and privileged to have our very own Jeff Thompson, uh, who will be giving us a session today and leading us through um, leadership and our values, uh, living our values as a leader. Um, Jeff actually, um, actually he lives his values completely and utterly uh, because he started a charity um, back in 1993 called um, Youth Charter, which is a charity that's registered under the United Nations. It's got NGO status. Um, and uh, for over 25 years, Jeff has been um, dealing with the impact of sport on young people and, and helping young people develop their own um, leadership skills and their own sense of selves, uh, focusing on development of young people within their communities and particularly focusing on the disadvantaged communities and helping young people express themselves and get a sense of self and building their values through sport and through arts. Um, and the reason why uh, Jeff is so passionate about sports is because it's actually something that um, came through himself. Uh, I read recently, I mean, for those of you that know, it was a, a very sad occasion uh, this past week in the United Kingdom. Uh, we mourned the, the loss of Prince Philip, who, um, is, who was the Queen's uh, the Queen's husband um, for over 70 years. He was a public servant to uh, the people of Britain and to the people of the Commonwealth. And uh, actually one of the legacies that the Prince, uh, Prince Philip leaves um, is the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. He was Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and he created the Duke of Edinburgh Awards, which was basically giving young people um, a different channel outside of their education to build their skills and competencies, uh, outward bound, uh, camping, sports and activities and physical activities. And it's, uh, it's actually my daughter is doing the Duke of Edinburgh Awards this year as well. So it's something that has been embedded into British culture, but not only within Britain, but also transported around the Commonwealth. And I believe that it's um, through one of the programs that was sponsored by the uh, Duke of Edinburgh that actually Jeff uh, got to be involved in sports in his own right, um, and then went on to become a uh, world champion in karate um, and over five times world champion. And Jeff is the holder of over 15 national and international medals um, from martial arts. He's in the martial arts hall of fame and uh, a few years ago, he was honored to actually get a, a recognition from the Queen um, and being awarded an MBA for his MBE for his uh, services to sport for, for, for the, all the work that he's been doing. So anyway, that's, uh, that gives you a little bit of a flavor of what uh, Jeff is, who Jeff is. Um, most recently, he's been appointed as deputy chair for the Commonwealth Games, which are gonna be hosted in Birmingham in 2022. So um, we're really, really delighted that uh, Jeff is giving of his time for us today uh, in his very busy schedule um, to share with us what he feels most passionately about, which is living your values as a leader and really focusing on those. And he's gonna be guiding us for this next hour. It will go on for a little bit longer than an hour, uh, just to warn you. So, Jeff, over to you. Ben, thank you very much. Phoebe, thank you. The Mandela Mile Leadership Team Support um, Team, um, welcome. And above all, to you, Mandela Mile Leaders 2021. Um, it is my absolute pleasure to join you this afternoon, albeit it might be at different time zones across the world. But the fact that you are in the third step of your Mandela Mile Leadership 2021 programme is for me a great opportunity to share with you my incredible journey that I have walked over hundreds of thousands of miles, but to share with you how being a leader and living your values can give you what I believe are the resilience requirements in this 21st century world and times in which we experience. Um, I'm always going to react and respond to what I feel and have a strong sense of, 
although we're interacting with one another on various digital platforms, I'm mindful of the great challenges, but the resilience and the innovative ways you've all been able to engage with this experience. I take for granted what light might reflect to me and broadband and even then with challenges, I go into a frustrated place of throwing my proverbial, um, should I say, behaviors out of the pram. It's an English saying, which means you lose it. But I know how much effort it is just to engage with this session. So I hope to share with you over the next, just over an hour and a half, exactly why being a leader and living these values and the role of sport and the arts in giving you that mental, physical, and emotional health, well-being, and safeguarding to realize your potential and change the lives of those projects that you will take forward as a result and legacy of this whole Mandela Mile um, Leadership Program 2021. So the format, you have hopefully your delegate packs, so you'll be able to follow the presentation um, stack that I'm sharing with you on screen. But the format does follow all things in its welcome and introduction, the gaining of an understanding of what leadership does mean in 21st century post-COVID world. We're still living that experience. We're still unclear and unsure of what that experience might, what might, what it might mean and what it will require from you in being able to adapt and respond to the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. I'll also cover, in addition to the leadership values and excellence, why the late Nelson Mandela and Kofi Annan used sport to help them realize the impact they would have on the world and how it gave them the resilience, how you apply that yourself as a future leader, a potential. Introduce you to Sport for Development for Peace as a movement, as a sector, for the role of sport in helping deliver the United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals and how you might apply those goals and the role of sport to the projects that you're currently developing or hoping to implement. But it all is encompassed with a youth charter journey and ultimately, you've heard about what I've achieved, but it's the journey and the experience that I've gained from a unique, humble street disaffection and disadvantage that was reflected on the color of my skin and my social standing in life, how I overcame those barriers in life, how sport, in this instance, karate, as a martial art, it's a sport, but it's an artistic expression. It's a way of life, it's a discipline, but it was something that gave me the opportunity, firstly, in its social requirement, to be able to defend myself against the racial injustice of the time and the area that I grew up in the East End of London. It was also something that gave me the escape from the disaffection of losing my father. But in all of that, I was developed by a community. That ability to then realize language, travel, competition, to win medals, for your country and to be afforded and celebrated on the results of those achievements, saw me move into sports administration and politics because I was always aware, I was always alert. And I know you as Mandela Mal leaders in your potential are aware of the world that you live in, its local day-to-day -day experience and existence and the role that you play in making a difference and making an impact. My medals have currency and I use them with the then Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher after the riots in Britain in pursuing the notion of sport for all as a fundamental human right, but with a responsibility that I believe every young person should have in their sporting and artistic, and as I said earlier, mental, physical, and emotional health, well-being, and resilience for life. All journeys lead you to a point in time, whereas on the way to Hollywood, I ended up in Manchester, so work that one out. Life's journey and the steps in that journey can take it to a unique place at times. But for me, it is so important to share with you where I've come from to assist you in the journey and considerations that you're making that will see you take future steps and inspire others to join you, to follow you and be supported by you. In Manchester, believe it or not, was where I won my first British title, but almost quarter of a century um, in its realization in 1993, I was to become an ambassador for the then Manchester 2000 Olympic bid. And there's a moment in time where you know exactly where you were, what time of the day it was, and why something stirred you to respond to a cry from the streets. 
And it was a cry from the streets that was centered around the shooting of a 14 year old schoolboy called Benji Stanley. And his face is always part of my presentations because not many people know him. But on January the 2nd, 1993, I know exactly where I was, what happened, sorry, the 3rd of January. But in all of that, what could we do? Because it highlighted the disaffects and disadvantages that led to the gang culture. And wherever there is poverty in the world, there will be a gang culture in the world. And it will seek to want to secure, take or realize hope and opportunity. So I use my sporting influence. I pulled together a charter, like a royal charter, a youth charter. And we had a simple aim to provide young people with an opportunity to develop, not realize their sporting or artistic potential, but to develop in life. We had that charter and at one of the cathedrals of sport in Wembley, we decided that we would take that journey. And this simply gives you what a cry from the street, a tragedy from the streets was able to achieve. We simply brokered, facilitated, campaigned, advocated. We took no as a simple motivation to convince people to say yes. And from that tragic loss of life, we have developed this timeline and this journey with an absolute commitment and dedication to effort. But soon after launching that charter in the January, I was to lead a delegation that would decide the new sporting vision for South Africa. And the vision for sport in South Africa saw me lead a British delegation and present the youth charter, present my journey and how that would play a part in restoring peace, tolerance and understanding in what was still a very, very tense country. I was then embraced by the late President Mandela and the ANC leadership, and they asked me to contribute because the color of my skin and my accent, they felt would have a great unifying bridge building opportunity to bring the, the, the sides of cultural difference together. Karate was used in the struggle, almost at a time when racial war would have seen both black and white doing karate in order to see one prevail over the other. And I learned very quickly, shuttle diplomacy, the ability to be un understanding and appreciative of what it took in sacrifice, struggle and realization. But that journey developed so much and I've, I'm, I know that Sipo Teshavalala is here and he's been remiss for some time. So the fact that he joined us, I'm sure at some stage in this journey, he will give testimony to what has been realized. But for now, I'm going to simply bring this image to your screen and to your hearts and minds. Last year, when I joined the Mandela Mar leadership, potential such as yourselves, we were just, we were months into the global pandemic. But on May 25th, we were, we were aware that the climate and, and potential disease meant nothing to us when an issue of justice and a wrong needed to be made right. The climate has seen global young leadership, Greta Thunberg inspired, but since all over the world, young people deciding the world that they want to inherit, the world that they will take responsibility to and for. Within that came the murder of George Floyd. I don't know where you all were last night, but I know where I was at 11.25. The words of guilty, guilty, guilty was simply giving a just account of an unjust act of brutality. Something that had been experienced on, by years and years of lives being lost and seemingly not valued. And the world as a diverse movement took to the streets because it was wrong. Nine minutes, 29 seconds was deemed to be wrong. An 18 year old young woman decided to record that wrong. And that is why we saw what happened last night, historically for the first time, seeing an officer brought to justice and hopefully heralding change. But in that, sporting activism came to the fore. And these images will be images you'll be able to see post this experience, this, uh, this session with me and me with you. But in all of that, 
There are images that inspired me from Tommy Smith and John Carlos in the 1968 Mexico Olympics, which was then about the racial injustice then and civil rights. There's Jesse Owens from the 38 Olympics from an Aryan um, Olympics where again, race became the ideology, but was overcome through sporting symbolism. The late great Muhammad Ali, who I'll touch on, Arthur Ashe, Colin Kaepernick, the NBA, the WNBA, and Naomi Osaka, who remarkably advocated each of the issues of lives lost in each round of her tournament and still won, still prevailed. So there's a wonderful intergenerational movement of young leaders and leaderings like yourselves who can affect change. And I believe sport and the arts are the vaccine and the antidote in bringing about that change. You'll see the European Super League. On Sunday, an announcement was made. A Super League heralded, and for those of you I hope have sport and the arts in your lives, saw what would have been historical change. In 72 hours, all of that Super League interest disappeared because the people took to the streets, the fans took to the streets, royalty aligned with government, political sides were unified, it was wrong and it was changed. But what does this look like in the post-COVID world? Yes, we're still living with it. The impact has simply amplified the social injustices that were experienced and being endured and encountered with each and every day. But our youth and communities have entered a period of unprecedented uncertainty. Hundreds of thousands of lives lost, billions more social distancing and social isolating, if they have the opportunity. Because from the developed and the developing world, we know what a light can represent to simply have the time to study, to revise, to be examined and to progress. Because education is the biggest and again, fundamental human right. But all the issues are there, it's a mind map. It goes through your subconscious and conscious. But for me, as 21st century leaders, you will be required from my humble experience to be re-engaged, re-equipped and re-empowering young people and communities socially, culturally and economically. That whole economic underpinning we know provides social and cultural impact. It can bring about change. It's a pyramid. It's understanding what equality, diversity, inclusion, participation, and as a social, cultural, and economic win-win-win for young people, communities, and the global society. And this pyramid for me is a new ecosystem. It's a virtuous and virtual ecosystem. It allows the sporting, cultural, artistic, digital interaction, because that's where the advantage lies within your young gifts, minds, and creativity and innovation. Your thumbs are as interactively active or actively interactive. And that is very powerful because as you see a cause or an injustice, it can be viewed, it can be shared, and it can be mobilized. But many people ask me, what do those important words mean? Well, they're there for you to see the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. That is equal and when it is unequal, or unjust, we challenge. Irrespective of what you look like, where you come from, what you believe in, what you sound like, whatever your, your life choices or lifestyle, situational conditions, your responsibilities and rights to that is an equality of right and purpose. Diversity, a range of many people or things that are very different from each other, but unify us in what those fundamental human rights are. Inclusion, the actual state of including or being included within a group or structure. Be also mindful. To include means power. Power to include or exclude. So it's a word that must be used and understood so that when you feel you are unjustly being treated, you make that choice, you make that challenge. But participation, because you all want to belong, is the feeling or belief that we can have one faith in or rely on something or somebody. And that's leadership again, that you can inspire, you can motivate. I tried to find some common leadership values 
and again looked for my inspirational journey and those shoulders upon whom I stand upon in order to bring to you what I believe is an intergenerational leadership value experience. The late great Muhammad Ali and my first interactive question to you, but I won't know until um, I'm able to see in the second screen of my presentation, your response. I'm hoping you all know who the late great Muhammad Ali was. But in him, in the late Nelson Mandela and Kofi Annan, they saw in him a greatness that transcended his own beliefs to what I have learned are his six core principles. Confidence, conviction, dedication, giving, respect, and spirituality. These are values that are transcendent. Some are already within your gift, some will be developed. Some are refreshed, some are restated and reintroduced. But when Muhammad Ali became the, um, the first United Nations Messenger for Peace in 1997, awarded and honored by UN Secretary General then Kofi Annan, it already represented what the unifying appeal and attraction that sport in its broadest possible context could do in bringing people to awareness, alertness and mobilization of issues where we need to be more understanding and tolerant of one another when we might be at odds and polarized in our day-to-day -day thinking. Leadership excellence in your wish to lead and develop projects that you will take forward. It's about vision, mission, strategy, planning, and above all, execution with impact. The 21st century leadership is about being responsive and reactive, being subconscious and conscious in your lateral thinking, and then applying emotional intelligence and intellect. And that becomes one 360. As I say, having eyes in the back of your head, being aware that the change might happen when you least expense, expect it, but you must be ready. So when you think about your plan, the future with great imagination and intelligence, your mission of particular work that you feel is your duty to do, the values must underpin it. The beliefs about it is right and what is wrong and what is important in life. You must have a plan. It is intended to achieve a particular purpose. The planning, the act or process of making plans or something is critical. You can always change your ideas. There are so many instances where the plan is there, the, the roadmap is there, the destination and arrival point. But you have to be reactive and responsive because the world is as certain as it is uncertain. But the execution with impact, the powerful effect that someone has on somebody or something is immense. Because everybody sorry, wants to be inspired. Jeff, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, we cannot see your slides. So if you're sharing your screen, it may not have worked. Ah, that's wonderful to know, because I thought I was sharing my screen. So all I can do is on the basis okay. of what you have heard, um, the slides will follow. But um, you can, ah, am I, am I now sharing my presentation? No. No. Well, that's what I thought was happening. So on that basis, I'm going to continue engaging with your hearts and minds and the presentation stack will follow. Um, the delegate- I can share it if you want, if you'd like, okay. I can share it. Thank Antoine, you. Antoine, I just share what Ben sent us. Um, if you look at the, at the chat, I sent the presentation and at the moment, Jeff is covering slide 10 slash 11. So everybody right. should have a copy of it now. All right, thank you so much, Miriam. I will share uh -huh. the scene here and everybody has access. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if you're now sharing it from your platform, I'm going to quit mine so that I'm able to work with what you have on screen. Does that work? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm down in the fire right now. But in all that I've shared with you to date, whilst the digital age works to our advantage or disadvantage, because quite frankly, getting on a platform is the achievement nine times out of 10, let alone interacting with those you want to engage with. So on that basis, 
the fact that we are so interactively dependent on one another, but more importantly on that leadership journey of realizing how we affect change and impact with mission and planning. With your delegate packs, you will already see and have the tools that will hopefully add value and give you a sense of how you can affect real, sustainable and impactful change. The ability to do that will always come from, as I've said, the ability to see how leadership excellence and leadership values were applied by those who have inspired everything that we've been able to realize and achieve. And for me, it will always be sense, centered around the ability of the late President Mandela and Kofi Annan. And as you will find, they both had the ability to use sport and we're right about where we would need to be. If we just hold there, we go back down. Thank you. If you just stop there, and a little bit further up, you will see how Kofi Annan, who had great promise as a sprinter, was incredibly fast, but knew how to apply that sporting achievement. There we are. That ability to be first past the line, the post, against those who would compete against him, but how he would apply that athletic discipline. And he trained every single day. Wherever he was in the world, he managed to grab that little moment in, to himself. The one thing I would leave with you is try and have the most important meeting of the day with yourself. It is where you can think, you can dream, you can apply thoughts, but with the subconscious application of your conscious effort, developing your mind, body and spirit, it does give you the clear ability to bring about an idea or an issue or a challenge and turn it into an opportunity. Kofi Annan understood that and lived by that. The late President Mandela was a boxer of great promise. Some say if he hadn't have taken up the struggle for and on behalf of what was to see him lead the ANC and what would be a global movement in ending apartheid, what he might have achieved in the ring is again what he was achieved outside the ring. And the late Muhammad Ali very much epitomized that very ability to reflect the social and cultural conditions of experience, and then seeing how that would lead to the UN Office for Sport for Development for Peace. That was established as a legacy of the 2000 Sydney Olympics and a chance discussion between our founding trustee and IOC member, the late Dame Mary Glenn Haig, and the late Kofi Annan, who in the VIP area happened to have a discussion, names were mentioned, I was mentioned, but they had a discussion and they used their respective positions of power and influence to develop that office. And that office was open for at least 17 years up until 2017. But in all of this and all the quotes that you will see, and I think the leadership quotes of Kofi Annan would always, I think as we summarize this first part of this session, that the future does belong to you but it can only belong to you if you participate and take part in the change, impact in the change and make a difference in that change. Education is quite simply peace building by another name because it's the truest form of education. It is character. Apart from informing you as we believe in the youth charter to read, write and count are the most emancipatory, powerful, fundamental human rights that every single child and young person should have. If they don't, it can lead to a disaffection and a disadvantage. But he also said we must use the power of sport as an agent for social change. It has the most unmatched role to play in promoting understanding, healing wounds, mobilizing support for social causes and breaking down barriers. So hopefully I've given you the background and context of the journey thus far, what this session represents, why I believe sport and the arts is so powerful, what can be achieved in that notion of what those quotes might represent, but what you represent as a leader and the leadership activity and what kind of leader you might happen to be. Everything is always interactively active and actively interactive. And whilst you're asking me any questions that result from what I've downloaded between the software between your ears, 
interactively and subconsciously review the leadership values and excellence and leadership quotes by both greats of global rights and leadership and decide which most suits you as a potential leader and explain why. By the way, this is all reflection that you can download, scribe and list. I'm gonna pause now because I've, as I said, shared a lot with you. And what I'd like to do is establish any comments, quotes or questions that you might have before we move to the next phase of engagement in this journey and this experience. Thank you very much. I'm hoping that Ben, Phoebe, if, if there are any questions, um, if they can unmute if they wish to, or that I know they're using a protocol of um, reactions or responses, more than happy to at least summarise the first first third of the, the three third engagement. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Josh Thompson. Good afternoon. Who am I, who am my I speaking to? Pamela. My name is Pamela, and I come from Uganda. Hello, Pamela. Welcome. Yes, um, uh, very good presentation and very good ideas and. Uh, it's, it's overwhelming to understand that sports really does have an, a good impact on the development of a country. Um, I come from Uganda where we tried very many times to reach the Africa Cup of Nations, but somehow, somewhere, there's uh, difficulty in reaching that, uh, that goal of our country. And uh, our government has actually so participating in sports because of leave the COVID. Even before the COVID, we found it difficult to, to have this, these finances intact. We, we come for Olympics, we do our best, but we never reach our, our target of actually being, uh, what can I say? a unifying factor. Uh, Ugandans, how do, okay, the question I have is this, how do you involve the country into supporting its local team so that we can actually build that, as we say, build that character to, to, to actually build that um, motivation of of saying that I am going to go to, we have a, a, a stadium called Na Mandela Stadium. And we really believe that Mandela did a very good, he played a very good role in, um, in unifying the South Africans with, uh, with the appetite thing and making them love each other in sports. But Ugandans have felt they, they, they mostly interact in this sport betting for these teams, uh, Aston Villa and uh, Arsenal. I'm not a good sports person, but we are more interested. You see them even wearing the jersey. You hardly see a Ugandan wearing a Ugandan jersey. So I don't know how we are going to break that stigma of thinking that Africans don't like we don't amount to much unless we are abroad. Pamela, that's an excellent question and is one of the great challenges that we now see in the globalization of sport. But firstly, it's worth mentioning that most of the sporting talent that graces the Premier League, and I'll focus on the Premier League because that is where most of the diversity that reflects the Commonwealth in this particular instance or the rest of the world currently resides. 
it, it does also reflect the people that live in this country, in Britain. But part of the colonial legacy of empire, where sport was used in the Commonwealth Games, for example, in the very early, early 30s, was used as a means of, upon independence being given to those countries of the Commonwealth that existed under British rule during the empire, the games were used as a means of unification, of maintaining the colonial links. And they were known as the friendly games because they didn't bring so much the emphasis that it was winning at all costs, but it was winning so that it could inspire the nations, the communities and the peoples of that particular country. Over many years, the natural raw talent of Africa and the Commonwealth has migrated to Europe and through the most powerful of sports in football or soccer, depending on what cultural name you wish to afford it. And that in itself has created a social, cultural, economic ecosystem that sees the Premier League now reach 4 billion people on the planet. Many people have called it a recolonization of the global community. And there are many challenges, as we've just seen, and I made reference to, the European Super League was set up to see the same numbers achieved that the Premiership was achieving. It's worth noting that 63% of Premiership players come from the rest of the world. But that is why, at the expense, as you've said, of in this instance, young Ugandans and the Ugandan people looking possibly at a Ugandan player who now plays in the Premiership, seeing them support a Premiership club, but at the expense of their local club and their national team, is one of the great challenges we face. However, I believe we face that challenge with the opportunity that soccer can bring into the classroom, the playground, or beyond the school gate into our communities. And that is why sport for development, soccer for development in this instance is so important. And that is why we need to develop projects and programs that recognize that whilst not every young African believes they will play in the premiership, and in many instances, make extraordinarily dangerous journeys across the continent, hoping to get across to Europe that they might see a trial because there are academies. So the Tottenham's, the Man United's, Liverpool's, all of those big clubs have academies in Africa. But what we now need is a new covenant. And with education, with health, a number of the Millennium Sustainable Development Goals, developing a model and a framework, which hopefully will be left with you today, I believe we can start to see some of that social and cultural shift so there is local pride, national pride, and then global awareness and following. It's not an easy subject, but one I believe starts to be shaped and reshaped by yourselves and by the civic and civil societies. Hi. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Um, my, my name is Yaira and I am calling in from Ghana. I Hi. have a question for you. So thank you very much for your presentation thus far. I really appreciate it. And your emphasis of on sports as being a tool for development and peace is something that really resonates. However, growing up, there was a paradigm around athletes. I was one of them. And that paradigm or that narrative was only the un unintelligent played sports. A lot of the time when we think about uh, leaders like Kofi, the late Kofi Annan and Nelson Mandela, um, many people might not even know their engagement in sports and the kind of discipline that it helped them build. But all I remember was being an athlete, every time it was time for sports, the, the, the educators, you know, favored us. But when it was, it, it, after that, anything else, we, we were considered irrelevant. Now, um, how do you think we could start shifting that paradigm because a lot of people think if you do sports it's great for while you're in school but then after that it really doesn't amount to anything and they don't see the importance 
and the kind of work and mental prowess it takes to build that consistency. How do you think we can change this? Because that was the narrative I had around me growing up as a student athlete all throughout. Um, as I've always found with the Mandela Mar leadership, they're that astute and that in tune with their own personal condition and experience to pose the challenge and hopefully gain some insight. Um, Yara, the notion of the student athlete, for me, first and foremost, comes with sport as the truest form of education character, as you've said. It, for those who really embrace it and not at the expense of the fact that they will all be a winner and arguably not take part, is being able to understand that education, sport, as I said, it's artistic, it's cultural and social impact should be, for me, a core curriculum requirement. And by that, I mean, whether you're at primary, secondary, further or higher education, it always plays the part as the additional, almost teacher, supporter, tools of helping you overcome the day-to-day -day challenges on campus. So for example, we know the student athlete bursaries and scholarships have been a great, again, colonial migratory, um, should I say, seduction and inducement to a number of American colleges, colleges in particular, and a number in Europe, uh, I might add. Um, the emphasis on balance that I know that you're referring to is that I know that there were teachers or lecturers who would say there's no need to look at your learning educationally, especially if you showed great potential in your sporting prowess. In other words, more time on the track, in the gym, on the court, was, was eminently more preferable than the book knowledge, the application of your curriculum for learning and your curriculum for life. The late great Jesse Owens would study into three o'clock in the morning following training that would finish at around nine o'clock at night. A lot of athletes are told they need seven hours of sleep. And even I, in my current sporting endeavors, am surviving on just, just about five hours sleep. The pressures are greater on the student athlete. It has great risk. That is why I'm a great advocate in reducing the risk and high expectations of the student athlete. And I am a contradiction in terms, whereas I would prefer to see a degree coupled with sporting prowess rather than that one out of a million that makes it to the very top of the pyramid I showed you earlier. It is full of high risk. I chaired a university up to 2019. And I've always said to everyone, for every single world-class competitor, there are at least 150 different careers from accountancy to um, project planning, especially to digital, to everything that would even see in a stadium, plumbers, architects, without all of those wonderful gifts, the competitor can do nothing. So again, we're looking at aligning universities, schools, starting that education with sport and the arts, for example, in Zambia in 1998, as part of a UK trade mission, we visited a rural school and it was burned out with local conflict. We used a football, some cones, the martial arts as the most cheapest return on investment. And we decided to engage the pupils who had all gathered because they knew that there were British guests um, that were going to be visiting them. And through a football, through some cones and through some basic techniques of physical and technical skills, we were able to deliver English, maths, geography, six subjects were delivered. They had no paper, they had no pens, but my, their minds were extraordinary. And it's that type of creative education that I believe can help alleviate the high pressures and expectations. I, I would have loved to have gone to university. I think I'd have been kicked out after about the first number of months because I'd have been a far too much of an activist, but I, I really would have welcomed having that thirst for education whilst developing my sporting prowess. Luckily, 
I always knew that with injury, as you know, it can happen at any given moment or time. And I always counsel young athletes, please strike a balance. The late Arthur Rash, um, the only black male to win Wimbledon, the tennis tournament, is another great inspiration of mine in the youth charter. He was absolutely adamant about the student athlete. And he used a tennis racket to educate, to bring about during the time of apartheid, sport for education. And it is very much reflected in the Arthur Ashe Foundation, whom we have an alignment with and whose philosophy we apply. But it is not easy, but the raw talent of the continents, of the Commonwealth and the global community must not simply be a laboratory of producing talent and then discarded. There are so many who are discarded and they're not given an education. In the States, if you're injured, you lose your scholarship. These are the things we have to ensure that with injury, they still continue their scholarship and finish with a degree. I hope I've answered your question in part. Yes, you have. Thank you. Thank you. May I please come in, Sipo Shabalala here. Sipo, how are you? Very well, thanks. Uh, good afternoon, Jeff, and good afternoon to the global citizens. Uh, I just want to touch on something, especially on, in fact, it's more of a comment to Pamela uh, with a question. Pamela, it, 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 it depends on the leadership. You have spoke about the leadership, you spoke about planning. Now, I want to, I would like to make a simple uh, example. South Africa hosted the World Cup in 2010. There is so much that was done during that period. I mean, it took five years learning a number of things on how to host an event. A simple thing for the stadium. We did not use the mechanism that FIFA used, the ticketing, which is a problem. Ticketing in South Africa, we are still buying tickets. Uh, you don't know where you're going to sit, but there was a tool, there was an education on our side to say this is how uh, you need to control, especially the crowd and make sure that people sit, they know where to sit. You know, people fight in the stadium over seats, a simple thing. But that has been caused because of the willingness of the leadership to make sure that they adopt that system. Now, there was a legacy fund which was part of the World Cup of, of, of FIFA. Now, I am still to see one project that has I can say this is a worthwhile project for, for the legacy fund because a lot of money has been put in. In terms of our standards, uh, I mean, US dollars compared to our end, it's a lot of money that would have empowered a lot of young people. A lot would have been done. But again, um, I must say, Pamela, we have forgotten as, as, as the people that charity begins at home. We, we, we forget completely that that the charity begins at home. For us to go out and not looking at our own thing, I would share some uh, tips with you. I mean, a simple example that you can do if the leadership has a will to make sure that people in, in Uganda follow the Ugandan uh, football or they prioritize. I'm not saying they mustn't take uh, other football as, 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 as as something to, 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 to enjoy or support. But if we, we, we can start by saying charity begins at home, how do you promote the local football? Here in South Africa, schools, there's no football, there's no sport in school. Now, hence our, our, our national team is doing so bad. It's simply because where do they recruit these soccer players? Because if you look the likes of Silma Singer, who played in the, in, in the UK, was part of the school uh, uh, footballer. That's why he was recruited by Tomo Sona to come and play for Tomo Cosmos and eventually played in, 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 um, in the UK. Lucas Katere, the same. But there is no follow-up. So we have killed our football. Now, the issue is, which we need to understand, is the leaders. What is it as leaders that we want to achieve? Are we there for money? Are we there for fame? Or are we there to build, to make sure that our sport 
uh, it speaks. Now, how many players uh, come out of South Africa to go and play in those leagues? I must say, we've got the best infrastructure. Some of uh, European uh, countries cannot come near South Africa in terms of the infrastructure that we have in this country. But what is it that we are doing with this infrastructure? How are we benefiting our young people? No, we are not interested as leaders. Now that's where the problem is. Now, if we had interested leaders, we would have used the resources that we have. A lot of money has been put in to build that infrastructure during the, the World Cup. Billions and billions of rents were put in. So the state is there, but the players who are the leaders of this country to make sure that these resources we take care or we take advantage of them. I mean, which of the African countries have benefited from the legacy fund? Remember what has been hosted in South Africa, we've got support from most of the African countries. The 52 members uh, uh, the of Africa supported our beat. Our beat was supported by Africa. But a simple thing, I, 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 I tried for a project, a simple project to say in Sadek, because I'm in mean also in transport business, to say the buses that were bought for for 2010, let all these countries get at least a pass so that the national uh, uh, team have got a pass as part of the legacy. That would end up cost a lot of money. Some of the passes are rotting because they're not being utilized. And you know, it's those simple things to say when a, 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 an advantage or when a project has come to you as big as the FIFA World Cup. What is it that you are going Mindful that Sippo will have frozen, but absolutely aligning with what he's presented as a challenge ongoing with the legacy of major events, especially as big an event as the FIFA World Cup. It's interesting to note that the legacy fund from the proceeds of the FIFA World Cup given from FIFA to South Africa was just under half a billion dollars. It's really important to understand the size of the fund. And I think one of the great failings of sport is once they say the circus has arrived and it leaves, there is very little infrastructure, there is very little development, there is very little consistency of effort. But that's what I believe falls to giving models, frameworks, giving the tools that allows young leaders like yourselves, communities, to be mobilized to realize the legacy in action. That is why I have campaigned and I helped secure that 2010 FIFA World Cup. And a lot of what FIFA do in recognizing that young players are predominantly coming from the African continent in particular. And therefore, it is in their interest to create an ecosystem so that the young talent can have local, national, and then international education and awareness so that when they make the journey and the risk is there, the risk does not fall solely upon them. Every player that plays in the premiership from the African continent or from the diaspora globally has some semblance of impact to the country they've come from, the community that they, they came from, even the school that they've inspired. Because those youngsters then want to be like any of the stars who play in the premiership. But it's a, it's a, it's a big dream that only a very few make. That's why it has to have the return along the lines that Sipo has suggested. Tashami. The raised hand, sorry, I'm not sure if you're hearing me. Hello. Great, okay. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me? Good day, Mr. Geoff. Hi there. And everyone on this platform. Um, personally, I'm humbled. I'm humbled by your presentation. I think so. One of uh, the critical presentations that I've uh, uh, that I've uh, heard so far uh, in addressing um, issues affecting sports and art in the art industry. Uh, personally, um, one thing that I have realized um, 
especially when it comes to, uh, to arts and sports. Um, the thing is, in fact, I like your, your, your balanced approach, which is a three-dimensional development, uh, three, three-dimensional three human, develop, uh, human, uh, human social and physical development strategy, which you're trying to share. I think if we have well-rounded people um, who, who, who have been given opportunity to excel as far as sport and art is concerned and uh, come back to their countries, um, uh, they, 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 they will add something, they, 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 will, they will contribute meaningfully as far as art and sport is concerned. So I think um, one thing that is most important, uh, uh, there's an issue of discipline uh, when it comes to our artists um, and, um, um, and um, uh, artists and um, even uh, 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 the, the player, the sport players and other, and, and other um, sport players. The issue of discipline is something that is um, talking, uh, especially in Africa. We realize so much of our talented um, uh, young women and men, uh, when it comes to discipline, is so pathetic how they handle themselves. Uh, they don't know how to uh, present themselves as far as most of these things are, uh, some of the things that you are actually highlighting are concerned, which presents a challenge to such an extent that um, some people who want their things to be done in a very professional way or who want to run their families in an orderly way, they, they find it very hard to, 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 to support their children who would have uh, wanted to go into, uh, let's uh, be it music or sports because of the bad apps that, uh, that, 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 that are everywhere if you try to look into into those industries. So I think, yeah, you're on point. I think it, it needs a real Thank you. Thank you. I'm from Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, uh, a place where I visited, and as I've said, have left a footprint that I know hopefully resonates with what you're able to do with what I'm about to present to you next. Because if I may, I want to make best use of time. We have half an hour, and I want to use the next step in the journey to see how we can model and frame, as Sipo said, so many resources are wasted because we don't approach it with a strategic discipline and a strategic discipline consistency of effort and purpose so that we're able to realize the very issues that we're finding. Most talented young minds have that global eye on where they could be or what they could be doing. Sometimes it's realistic, sometimes it's unrealistic, but nonetheless, it is the right to dream that sees you achieve something in your everyday local or national country. And then with travel, broad, travel broadening the mind as I had, you then start to see that, that well-rounded global citizen result. I'd like to take you to page 11, if I may, because it is about sport for development for peace. I'd already explained how it was established in 2000. Um, 5.1, sport as a human right. It is there in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights now. It is there, it's a mandate observed by all member countries of the UN. The Convention for the Rights of the Child. These are all important declarations and rights that you must be aware of because you can then apply them in your local region and even national setting whenever you're wanting to shape your project or build a unique aspect to your project. And as I've said, sport and the arts is the cultural additional value to engage young people with sport, art, culture, and digital, equipping them with the mental, physical, emotional health, well-being, and life skill resilience, and then empowering them with an aspiration of further higher education, employability, or entrepreneurship. That is the ecosystem that we have to apply, or else it is simply, as Sipo said, hundreds of millions can be wasted with no endearing impact or added value. In 5.2 is the role of sport in developing and delivering the UN 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. And again, there's an introductory narrative that shows that there is a lot of work taking place on how those 17 goals can be used effectively and efficiently in delivering specifics in all that it affords. In your delegate pack, the 17 goals are listed. There are some that I believe are fundamentally required. No poverty, 
no hunger. Good health and well-being comes from a good education. If it is equal in those first four, having the right environment with clean water and sanitation means you're living a dignified life. It means that decent work and economic growth can result from that three-phase engagement I shared with you. Industry, innovation and infrastructure is what you develop with your projects. It reduces the inequalities, it builds sustainable cities and communities. The responsibility for consumption and production is one of the great issues of climate change. What will be the zero emission commitment by the global powers who extract natural resource in order to build and maintain the economic drivers? And how does that take climate action to a point where we save the planet and you inherit a planet? life below water. As, as the waters rise, we are flooded. We expect unusual climatic changes. And normally to those countries who are below sea level are at greatest risk. But peace, justice and strong institutions, civil and civic society must be underpinned by partnerships for those goals. And when you can deliver that in an integrated and holistic fashion, it leads to the scenario that again, for the seventh of time, because I want to download and then have the interaction, you will complete those goals and how it reflects or could relate to or assist you in delivering a project that you already have in mind or already developing or already implementing. Because it simply asks the question, how can your project achieve any one of the 17 goals I might add? in the post-COVID environment, in the fact of what is still being experienced, but what has to be by that global challenge become an opportunity. Because again, a leader with value will always find a positive out of a negative. It's what makes you unique. It's what makes you stand out. And you have to stand head and shoulders, not in your height, but in your energy, in your commitment, in your passion, in your ability to motivate others to work with you. But how can sport be used to develop and deliver the sustainable development goals? These are all questions that you will ask. And hopefully, as I have sparked or switched your emotional intellect and your creative membranes between your ears, and 99% of it exists between your ears, please do not believe the convention and notion that we only use 10% of the 90% brain power between our ears. I simply ask in my common sense degree of life, if we're only using 10%, and that's if you're maxed out to be a genius, what are we doing with the other 90%? So always think beyond the conventions and boundaries, or even the barriers that are placed before you. So this again, is just about you upon it being downloaded in your conscious, as you review and reflect on all that's been shared with you, how would you do that? How would you make that work? So that page 13 is again, another bit of homework, nothing too great, but something that we'll see as a result of this session, you take away some pearls of wisdom, some experience, some evidence, but adds to your creative leadership thinking. And in that, you might see an added value. You might benchmark against any one of those goals. We at the Youth Charter are using five with an additional three that I'll share with you shortly. And that will hopefully give you, again, cognitive visualization of what the art of the possible can be. Because for you in the 21st century world of leadership, if you don't see it, you don't believe it. And you have to see that leadership equally in the positions of power, in order for you to believe it's obtainable, it is accessible, and it can be realized. So again, page 13 will be informed by the concluding and really valuable imparting model, framework, all the things that we talk about. So in this particular concluding um, page, we talk about the Youth Charter's COVID-19 and Black Lives Matter call to action. You must have a plan. 
That plan must be well informed. You will have consulted, you will have discussed, you will have debated, you will have interacted, you will have used social media and as and when applicable to gauge the social and cultural mood and climate. And young people are activated now, they're aware, because not only did COVID allow us to pause as a global community and give the world a chance to reset, we could reposition as a result of those nine minutes and resulting seconds of George Floyd's life. That young 18 year old woman who said, this is wrong and I'm gonna record it and I'm gonna share it and others would then share it and it become a global fundamental wrong that had to be put right. And what I've shared with you there with the COVID-19 Black Lives Matter call to action is simply what this represents. And this is the Youth Charters plan, informed by everything I've shared with you. At the top, we came up with something that could be modeled in any community in the world, any city, suburban or rural, first world, third world, and I hate using that term because there is no first world or third world, there's one world. But on the continent, the, the country, the city, the community in which you live, we believe that the fundamental right to sport and artistic activity in the educational, health, well-being, attainment and potential of children and young people started with somewhere to go. It could be a school, it could be a church, it could be a community building. Any building that takes young people off the streets and gives them purposeful and meaningful activity is what makes up a community campus. It can have one facility, it can have five facilities, seven facilities, depending on the local and community environment. But those facilities are a network. And in that network of community campuses, we have the people to show them, the social coaches. I wanna just share with you the social coach leadership program because it is our signature program and it reflects the true currency. I'm gonna stay, if I may, now I'm gonna stay with the, the campus call to action for a moment because the social coaches are featured, that's it. If we just stop there, the 50,000 social coaches are the real currency. They already exist in your community. These are people who already love working with young people. They either educate them, mentor them, lecture them, support their development. They could be a teacher, a policeman, a sports coach, an artistic um, instructor, anybody who works with young people, who applies real common sense life experience, and can build a relationship of trust, confidence, and respect. They are from the community, by the community, with the community. And they are recruited, selected, and deployed because they're a consistent presence. I was brought up, they say in the African proverb, the village brings up the child. I believe equally, the community brings up the young leader, the young leaderee. Because in the teenage years, we always want to ask why. We always want to challenge. We think we can do it better than those who are currently doing what they do with the responsibility and power that we give them. So the social coaches is again, something you will be given access to, but it has reflected my journey and it's intergenerational to the present that sees you deploy a social coach leadership program and it gives you leadership values, tools, experience that you can apply not only in sport and the arts, but in life, it is transferable, it is intergenerational, and it can go in the classroom, the playground, beyond the school gate, and it brings public, private, third sector, community sector into one collective movement of youth leadership engagement. We have a plan to develop 50 community campuses on five continents, recruit, select, and deploy 50,000 social coaches, and to engage one, five million young people. A million will be on um, the English and European continent. Now that's an ambitious plan and everybody says we can't achieve it. Well, why not? Why isn't it possible? Well, as we move to 7-1, which is the Mandela Mall Global Community Campus, just here is something I'm gonna share with you exclusively as of Mandela Mall Leadership 2021 alumni in the future, a portal that has been designed just for you and last year's cohort of Mandela Mile leaders. 
you will be able to have access to this portal and you will have everything by way of the campus on the right, which is the facilities, the social coaches and the youth wise education packs. These are all free as a fundamental human right. We believe they are free at the point of engagement. On the right hand side, support, collaboration for partnership, how you plan, prepare and deliver your activities. More importantly, how you can map, track and measure the inputs of your effort, the outputs of your effort, the outcomes, project management, portal members area, so you can share best practice. But I equally appreciate that you know that the, in, well, digital IT infrastructure allows you to do what you need to do. And I'm here to reveal you to you today, we're having discussions with the global social media companies to make sure that these efforts are seen as equitably accessible with you having that broadband, you having that internet and you having that digital capacity. For example, Facebook on the basis of addressing the radicalization of young Africans in particular, the situation we see in Mozambique and areas where poverty breeds gangs, but extremism. So they're recognizing their responsibility as globally corporate and influential. And I'm hoping to have some positive news for you that we'll see as a right, what you put in, we'll see it matched and rewarded with having the ability to engage and access with the type of platforms like we're presenting to do you today. This allows you with access and permissions to work together, to plan, to prepare, to gain evidence. And when you're looking for funding, this is what funders will now want to see. They don't just want evaluation reports. So this model has taken a number of years to develop. It can be adapted to any community, any setting, but this by way of the Mandela Mao leadership journey is and will be for your good selves. In 7.2 is what and I suppose is behind this and drives this. And ultimately, do you know that there is a youth UN 2030 Development Goals Forum? This is the young people of the Commonwealth and of the, U, um, the UN and of the world. And we've now as a UN NGO presented this model and the World Health Organization are now looking at how it can complement the movement, but more importantly, how young people like yourselves can be supported, can be assisted and be given the tools that will help you make an impact in your communities, in your countries and in the world. It is all there for you and is all being developed for you, but it's inspired by your ability to have the means by which you can engage with it on a regular basis. By, by the way of what we gain from it is by your individual and collective efforts, we produce reports that informs global strategy, resources that we know are not in abundance, but in the effective and efficient use of your innovation, creativity, and ability to map, track, and measure, and evidence what you do, you will be able to get resources because the global companies have it, the global institutions have it, but this is how we get the evidence of how you can attract more support on the basis of moving forward. In 7.2, the community campus model is given an explanation and gives you some additional information by way of page 15, if scrolled um, further. This will all give you informative reading so you're able to use the campus, how it works, the themes, how it was developed, what it attempts to achieve, and everything that is reflected in our legacy development goals. And we use legacy goal four, quality education, three, good health and well-being, sustainable development goal 16, peace, justice, and strong institutions, sustainable development goal 11, sustainable cities and communities, SDG eight as their own decent work and economic growth. And then we use 17 and 10, 17 partnership for goals and 10 reduced inequalities, but collaboration and partnership is what realizes the equality, diversity, inclusion and participation of opportunity. This is all to inform you. This is all to assist you. This is all to empower you, engage you and equip you 
with what you can now see added value in everything that you wish to do. In page 16 is the social coach. We introduce it to you. We give you the background to it. We give you what is required. And we give you some evidence of where it's been delivered. All of this now exists on the portal that we will give you permissions and passwords to access. And it will be your digital interactive space. It is all about how this can be realized and taken forward on the basis of what you choose to do with it. Because all I'm here to do and the Youth Charter is here to do is to empower you to do just that. I'm now gonna pause because I've again downloaded much that will be coursing through your minds. I can answer any questions and then we'll sum up because already quality time spent means quality, hopefully interaction realized. Thank you, Jeff. If anybody would like to ask Jeff some questions. I know there's a lot to take in. A hell of a lot to take in. Uh, and that's we're very... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's 28 years of work. It's always the pressure. How do you share it? Normally, it would be a day and normally, and I'm sure Sipa Shavalala will tell you what the real legacy of the 2010 um, FIFA World Cup was, as well as the 2006 then FIFA World Cup bid for South Africa. He is the living proof of what can be realised if given hope and opportunity. But stories change lives and um, we have it on our website and I will endeavour to share his testimony. But you have him here and I'm sure that at some stage in the experience of the journey, he will tell you that story. But I'm just mindful that you have a chance to question, probe, challenge and seek any further clarification. Hello, sir. Hello there. I'm back again, Sunati. Okay, Sunati. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to ask, um, did you have, do you have something in Zimbabwe so far? When you came to Zimbabwe, did you come uh, when, uh, with um, that uh, youth chat uh, program or it was something else? Sorry, this was, it, the Zimbabwe link was through the Commonwealth Games and the Zimbabwean Commonwealth Games um, National Committee for Zimbabwe. For example, the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games were aiming to give this and more to each visiting country as a legacy opportunity for all. But I'm hoping, um, and I make this invitation, all my, no, I'll wait until you've all asked me the questions. I'll let's see if you've earned the right, by the way, you know it's hard work. You get up early, you finish late, you work smart, you work clever, you work intelligently, and you apply the intellect you've been blessed with, and you make a difference. But that sort of global space, and for all of the Mandela Mal leaders, the Commonwealth is a focus at this moment in time, but don't believe that you're not part of that global Commonwealth, because the United States of the Commonwealth will admit, by way of some historical um, empire of how the world was divvied up, Everyone is a common of wealth. But any questions that you might have are readily um, to be answered, should you so wish. Uh, all right, thank you. I, I'm answered on that one. Um, maybe I'll come up with some other uh, questions later. I will see how best I can reach them out to you. Thank you. By the way, um, all that you have can be as I said, that's why you were given the delegate pack. It's a lot to try and achieve, but there'll be a lot that you review and reflect on. And this is an ongoing relationship. It's not me just appearing and leaving you with hopefully some inspirational um, switches that I've now set alight. But ultimately, how do we take that forward? And that's why the portal has been designed for you, with you, by you. You'll be able to critique it. You'll be able to develop it and you'll be able to take it forward. Um, thank you again. This is Yara speaking. Yara. So, one, um, again, thanks. The portal, you speak as though it's ready, is it? Two, um, if we do want to connect with you, how will we do that? So, two questions. I thought there might be a third. <laughs> I might be thinking of a third. Let's start I with I thought you might two. be. I could sense. I sensed there was a third, so I waited with bated breath. I'll answer the first <laughs> question and it might okay. lead to the third. 
the third might be a little lengthier. Yeah, the, the first is the portal is now live. Um, what we do is we populate it, but we do nothing more until those who wish to engage with it, embrace it, develop it, and add their own unique creativity and innovation. There are some standard features, but as you engage with it, and that the passwords can be made available as soon as you choose to engage with it. So um, permissions can be issued within 48 hours. What we've been trying to do is make sure that we can provide internet, um, should I say, support and digital infrastructure support. And that's why we're talking to the big digital companies. And I can share with you, they've got a big interest in football. And all I've asked them to is to do the right thing by making sure that the countries who produce the talent and potential playing in their ecosystem to see something realized in the educational sport for social human development. And they're now beginning to listen. But we are working very hard, albeit with extractions or distractions of European Super Leagues. The second question you're going to have to remind me of, but that was of um, the ability connecting with you. of connecting with us. That will come afterwards and the contact details are quite simply contact youthcharter.org. Okay, so the and third that's one. Your delegate pack. I thought your third question would follow. Yep. Yep, it's coming. The third one, like you said, the first one triggered it because you said we are able to customize it as we see fit, even though it has some standard features. Mm -hmm. Now, is this a way that we will be able to measure impact of our project? Granted, different projects are going to take different forms. In some cases, um, you know, someone might be working directly with people virtually while others might be doing this work manually. So how would we be able to, and perhaps this might not be a question you could answer now, maybe something you think about, but how will we be able to take these differences into that portal, depending on the work we're doing, to create these metrics that will prove the impact we're creating? <laughs> There's always the bright button who provides all the intellectual rigor of challenge. Um, thankfully, um, to all of your points raised in one question that had about six sub themes to the question, um, when you engage with the portal, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised and excited. All of the aspects that you're looking for are there. So the matrix of impact, the ability to map, track and measure, project manage, network and share best practice, but have your individuality of project, but the collectivity of your collaboration and effort as individual leaders, but as collective leaders, because that is how in, in normal terms, a consortia can go to the big institutions. So I will share with you the inspiration of the community campus. In 2017, there was a European Union and Africa um, summit in Brussels where they were looking at the whole aid of Africa. And I said, why is it not an investment? So I took this idea and I presented it as a concept to the World Bank. And there were five officials and they were scribbling away in a very hurried nature. And I said, this is not possible as a theoretical exercise. However, if I present this to you, would it work if it could be activated and made to be really engaging along the lines I've proposed and visually set out? And they said it would receive a C rating, which in World Bank terms, I've told is a pretty good thing to do. So between 2017 to the present, we have applied every day for at least three to four hours a day what that would look like. And last year, we started to frame and shape from the Mandela Mile leadership experience what it could look like. Everybody's been working in a reduced um, capacity, but that gave us, since COVID and with the motivation of George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement, something that was equitably diverse and inclusive of everybody in the world, because everybody mobilized for that wrong to be made right. So we've produced something that I'm really excited today to share with you. When you access the portal, it will excite me as to what more you could do with it. But everything you've asked, Yara has and is there, and will allow you to gain more efficient and effective use of time resource and I think the sharing of good practice that you will all begin to populate and bring to life what has been developed in the infrastructure of the portal but more importantly the evidence of your work to attract support and investment for your work 
So if you go to the World Bank and you say we're after half a billion dollars for 15 projects, 40 projects, and you can impact assess them, represent them, present them, project manage evidence, impact matrix, but above all, you give those institutions, albeit restricted access permissions, to see how your efforts are performing. The great thing about projects of this kind and the platform of this kind, if you're getting it wrong, you can make it right because we're never going to get it right all of the time. But you go to any bank, the one thing they hate is not being communicated to or given the evidence of what's working or is it, what isn't working because they adjust their budgets and books accordingly. So it's all there for you. I'm very excited at the prospect of what it could mean once you have sight of it and able to review it and provide the feedback. That's why you're given a delegate pack as well. And you will be able to upload from it. But as I've said, I want to try and also assist the digital infrastructure support. And that is something we're working on. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. I'm equally mindful, Ben, that I'm I'm mindful of the time. An hour and a half. Yes. Absolutely. I'm mindful of the time and um and you've shared a huge amount of information, Jeff. Thank you so much, as always, and thank you for the engagement uh from all of our participants and uh the wider community. It's really uh, great um to see the reaction that you've had. Um there's so much information that you shared. Uh, importantly, it's all being shared and distributed both in uh, the pack in electronic document format. All of you should be receiving it um, and Antoine will post it on the WhatsApp group as well. And uh, we will manage the process of uh, people being able to sign up for the portal uh, as well. So uh, that's uh, an exciting thing to come. Um, and uh, we really want to be able to enhance uh, enhance the experience of the Mandela Mile program by using all the different uh, technologies that are available. So your efforts in uh, pushing for the various different organisations um, to give us to give uh, internet access for those of us who are in countries where it's more expensive is is very much appreciated. So um, thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, there's a huge amount to digest here. So for everyone, I'm sure you're going to be uh, spending the next few days and weeks assimilating all this information. Um, if you've got any questions for Jeff, uh, then you can uh, post it through. If you channel it through either myself or, or Antoine, um, we, will, we will channel those questions for Jeff so that he doesn't receive 101 emails. But, um, but please feel free to get back to us with any questions that you have and, and we'll manage that. So it just says, uh, thank you everyone for your time. Thank you for your engagement. Um, and thank you most of all to you, Jeff, for giving us an hour and a half of your time. Um, we know it's not easy to condense 28 years into 90 minutes, but you did a very good job of it. So uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you for all you do for both Mandela Mile and for youth around the world. Thank you. And thank you. And all I would say, and Sipo will know this, there have been many lives lost that should have been saved. You take forward all of their lost potential and you will turn it into opportunity. The last word lies with Madiba. Vision without action is but a dream. Vision without action is merely passing time. Vision with action can change the world. You can be that world, change that world, impact that world. Thank you and God bless.